it's great to meet you. I absolutely loved Senna. I've right. seen it twice already. I saw it at South by Southwest. Oh, wow. Um, right. Yeah, and um, loved it and loved the audience. Um, that was amazing to screening, it. actually. It was astonishing, Most yeah. vocal audience, American yeah. audience in particular. They start clapping when Senna crashes into Prost, don't they? <laughs> yeah, it was brilliant. But how, how was that for you then, seeing your film in America, which probably isn't going to get picked up as much as, say, Europe will? Yeah. Uh, it was, you know, we always had a gut instinct that the US audience would like the film. And, and that we knew there is, OK, it's, it may not be the top 10 sports, but because it's such a big country, there's still in a lot of people there who would like the film and who will go and see it again and again. And um, so that was part of our challenge and our battle because the studio were like, I don't think there's an audience. We probably would never get a release. If we're lucky, we'll get a DVD. And so that's when my kind of roots of making independent films came in, where we said, well, why don't we go to Sundance? Why don't we go to a festival? And James K. Reese, the producer... Um, had been there previously with his previous film. And so we pushed to do that. And not a penny was spent on PR, on, on publicity. We didn't have any posters on it. You know, we just went there on our own, showed the film to an audience that had never heard of him, essentially, mm. and didn't watch Formula One. And we sold out six screenings. It won the audience prize. And um, the final screening was in front of 1,300 people at the Eccles Theatre at, at Sundance. And it was just, it's been an amazing journey. And that's what led to South by Southwest. Uh, in the US particularly, we've had, we've, really have been using social networking. It's mm -hmm. Twitter and Facebook that have kept the film alive. People have been driving 900 miles to go and see the movie or flying across the US because they think it might be the only chance. And so, and you were there. I the response has been amazing. It's like, they love it. <laughs> well, it was just fantastic to see everyone standing up and clapping. And, and yeah. there was a, 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 a poll after that. Like, I think you asked, you know, how many people have seen it? 50% yeah. had never heard of it. Yeah. So do you think, um, especially in England with, say, um, the demographic, lots of men are going to go and see this film because they've heard of Senna. How yeah. are you going to... Oh, I see it as my own responsibility to get other people, to maybe more yeah. ladies, to go along, yeah. but how are you going to... How do you think that's going to get picked up? In, in this country? In this country and, and abroad. I think well. generally... Uh, OK, there are a lot of Formula One fans out there. So people who are fans of Senna, people who are fans of Formula One are going to go. They know about it because the word is out there now. It's spread. Um, what's been amazing is the word of mouth has been really positive that friends have gone along and enjoyed it almost more. I mean, in fact, I've been trying to say to people, if you are a fan and you take a friend, don't tell them about Senna. Don't tell them everything before they go in because a lot of people don't know where it goes and don't know how it ends. Mm -hmm. and, and in a way, they have a bigger, more emotional journey on the film. And so as long as word of mouth continues and as long as the film's out there and they can find it, I think, you know, we'll be OK. And what's interesting about Senna is it seems to be working for men, women, young, old, you know, whoever, families. It's, it's, it's interesting. Formula One is one of those sports that's on at lunchtime. People watch it as they're having their Sunday lunch or mm -hmm. something. And, and so many people have said they've seen it once and they had to go and see it again. And they took their dad along. The person who used to try and get them to watch Senna and they were like, I have no interest, I'm going out. Now they take their dad along to watch it with them. And so it's been this kind of interesting family sharing experience of seeing it. And your childhood, I suppose, it's a moment of going back to the 70s, 80s, 90s. Absolutely. Um, can I get into how you actually got the footage? So I know mm. Eccleston gave you access to his airport hangar and you were able to yeah. go through for a couple of days, I think. Mm. How did you... There was obviously a language barrier, so you may see a bit of footage that's in Portuguese, but yes. you don't necessarily know what he's saying. How do you pick and choose the bits right. that you want to pull out? It was a, it was a, that was a key part of our figuring out how we're going to make this particular movie, because it's not like, OK, I'll just do what I did on previous films. Um, what we found quite early on... OK, we, we had to pick and choose key races key races that we knew were important moments in his career. Then we had to look at every bit of footage within that. And then we started looking at press conferences. And Senna would give a 45-minute press conference in English. Mm -hmm. And it'd be amazing. Or there'd be other ones just after race that would be pretty bland. And you'd think, OK, there's nothing special. But then he'd give another really long one in Portuguese. And we said, well, what the hell? Let's just do a transcription. And it'd be a totally different interview. Because when he wins in Brazil, for example, for the first time, 91, Sao Paulo, he wins in English and he gives a press conference. And it's OK. Then he speaks in Portuguese to his fans, to his own people, about God, about spirituality, about all these bigger ideas. And it's so amazing. Mm. And that's when we realised, OK, we're going to have to double our work. Every time he gives an interview, let's look at the English one and the Portuguese one. And when we see Prost, look at the English one and the French one, because they're very different. This is a classic thing that they were speaking to their own crowd, knowing that no one else is going to know on the other side of the world what's going on. And, uh, and it was a very important way of getting under the skin. And Senna spoke in Portuguese about his faith in a very different way. Uh, and, and at a certain point, he stopped talking about God in English because he, he was humiliated. People used to make fun of him, saying, well, you're crazy, you know. Right. And, and that was interesting. And that was important for us to t show the story from his point of view. And, and equally, the, the Senna footage from family, um, from family footage, yeah. was, was, has the Senna estate 
did they give you this footage? Yeah. I mean, the whole film has had so many chance meetings and you know things where people have got in touch with us and luck. We've had a lot of luck. So we went to Sao Paulo to meet the family. We met Senna's mother. We met Senna's sister, Viviani. We met his niece. And no one really talks to Leonardo. So I wanted to meet his brother, Leonardo, who's in a lot of footage because he was his younger brother. And so Senna, you know, he obviously must have looked up to Senna. And, um, and people were like, no, he doesn't really have much to say. It's OK. It's not really worth it. But I was like, I really want to meet him. And we went to talk to him and he gave an interview. And he was there in Imola. He was the only one in Imola. And, and all of his summer holidays, he'd, um, when he was off from university, he'd come and hang out with his older brother. And he said, I used to have a VHS camera. So I said, have you got these tapes still? And he says, I'll have to look for them. I haven't seen them for you know, 15 years. But again, he trusted us. There's, there was this amazing thing where because we'd done our homework and people trusted us, so he dug out his VHS tapes and let us have them. And no one's ever seen these before. Mm -hmm. So we've got intimate material of Senna, you know, on a, on a boat with girlfriends and with family. And, and it's really beautiful stuff. Um, and Leonardo trusted us. That's great. Um, through this film, so um, you obviously never met Senna. No. Um, but did you feel like you got to know him and, as you were making the documentary? You know, this film's probably been about four or five years of my life, um, the producer's six years probably. Whenever you make a movie, it becomes a part of your life, a part of your history and your, ex you know, your, your history, I suppose. Um, good or bad, you've been living in a particular world or you go to a particular country and you, have a, you shoot a movie. So... For, for me, it's been a real learning curve and, and I've spent lots of time in Sao Paulo and I've got to meet lots of people and like my composer, Antonio Pinto, is from, from Brazil and he's like family now, he's a dear friend. Mm. And yeah, I, I, I now know a lot more about Senna. I've seen, obviously, I've seen a hell of a lot more footage than I could fit into the film and I feel like I've got to know the man and I really like him. He is a real hero. Yeah. You know, like before the film, Ali was my hero. Now Senna's absolutely up there. Um, watching the film, I was blown away. I love it. I laughed, I cried, and I can't wait for people to see it. So good luck with it, and thank you so much for making it. Thank you. Together. Thank you very much.